Hi, my name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And today we're going to talk about why you probably want an iPad. Well, you have to have an iPad, right? Isn't that the way Apple makes you tells you? You have to have one. Exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to give you an excuse so you can use it for production. Oh, it's a write-off. I see. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So one of my favorite type of apps for an iPad is an actual DSLR slate. Yeah. So we got two different ones today. One that's pretty cheap and one that's more expensive. Just depends on the features. Right. And just to give a quick history lesson here, of course, a slate is often used at the beginning of a shot to write you know, production information as a sync point for you know dual system audio, yeah. dual system sound, that kind of stuff. But now we've moved it from I don't know analog. To digital. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and launch the DSLR Slate application here, dedicated app, and you see that you can load up all sorts of information. So you can load in the producer, the project, the frame rate, the lens, the memory card, all sorts of things, the white balance. And then when you're ready, you just open the Slate and then it's got that info. Yep, it's very cool. And then, you know, also up there at the top, you can even uh, make, uh, get chip chart, you can do a whole bunch of other things. And the thing that I love about this too is that. You know, a lot of people are taking advantage now of things like the Final Cut Pro Log and Transfer plugin for Canon cameras and that kind of stuff, and other methods where we use time of day time code. Well, guess what all those numbers there are? Time of day time code. Time of day mm -hmm. time code, right? And so it's just going to use whatever the clock is on the uh, on the iPad to, as time of day time code. And you can go ahead and you know unlock that in between takes and just enumerate and change you know as you need to go up take number. Yeah, sure. You know, type in different scene. When you're ready, you just hit start. And it cycles through all that info. And then and you get your two pop. pop and a flash frame, yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the reason why we're not hearing audio here, like the actual pop, right. is because we're going out the HDMI so we can mirror what's on the screen so people can see that. Yeah, it's because, of course, you have an iPad 2 that does this. My iPad 1 doesn't do it. Yeah. Well, see, now you got a reason to buy one. <laughs> so you see there, there's a little pop. It's nice. And then when you're done, you know, you can go ahead and just exit the slate or close the slate put in the updated information for the next scene and then launch it. And this is just one more thing. Now what I recommend for the DSLR workflow yep. is get this framed in the shot before you roll. Yep. And then as an editor, you could see all that info right in the bin. No, absolutely. And the nice thing about this too is that, you know, as you're, you know, doing a, a scene or take, you can, as you put in, as you said, you can really quickly change that information update. Take two, take three, take four. Yeah. And it's really quick. You don't have to keep track of who has the Sharpie, right. you know, all that kind of stuff. And then there's a little more advanced one called yeah. Movie Slate. Yeah, this one's a little more expensive, but I think does a little bit more. Yeah, and what you could actually do with this is load up all the information. Same thing, you know, you could change information without having to exit. So if I just tap that, I could say, oh, well, this is camera two, actually. And you know what? This is going to be, go ahead and be take two. Notice you actually have the ability to enumerate. So if you wanted to do a 2A or a 2B, yep. you know, you could just keep stepping through. Also have time and day time code there, of course. Yeah. And when you're set, you know, you tap this and it'll flash that info and it does the beep. Yep. And it does the clap for a sync point, and that's great. But what's different about this one is while you're using it, you can actually take notes. Oh, wow, that's very cool. So you see here, we've got the ability to assign video quality and audio quality, so you could actually add information about the scene. Yep. You could tap the note field and start typing in notes and say, oh, you know, what type of shot is this? Oh, this is, uh, this is going to be a pickup or this is B-roll. Add so that. A, as you're filming, a production assistant or somebody on set can just be sitting there making notes. Yeah, and they could just choose from like your shot categories. This mm -hmm. is a wide shot. You know, you can go ahead and add that. You can use abbreviations. You can go ahead and tap in extra info, type it in. You could even record the audio of what's happening during that shot mm -hmm. or take a still picture for reference. Okay, very cool. And when it's all done, it's not, you're like, well, that's great. It's on the iPad. What do I do? Well, it can actually export this info out to Final Cut or Premiere Pro. When I find this out for the first time, I was just blown away because that's always been one of the disconnects between production and post, right? Is that information flow from production to post. Yeah. And traditionally it's happened, oh, here's some notes on a piece of paper, or, you know, or a shot log or whatever. Yeah. Now we can get a lot of the information just flowing as XML and as metadata right into our particular nonlinear editor that we want to use. And you notice when we stop that, it actually automatically enumerated to the next take for us. Yep. Uh, across the bottom here, you go ahead and do all sorts of customization about the camera and the optics. What are you using? Mm -hmm. You can go into the settings and there's all sorts of categories. Some of the even cool things you could do is you could even load up an audio track or a reference movie if you're doing something timed to say a music video. Yeah, absolutely. You can even jam sync multiple ones of these together using a Wi-Fi network. So if you had to have multiple slates for multiple cameras and you all wanted to be on the same slate and time code, 
one person could call action and you could be slating cameras like everyone could just take out their iPhone and hold it in front of their lens yeah, to get the info then put it back in their pocket. It's uh, just like Steve Jobs said, it's magic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so two great apps. Yep. One's like five bucks, the other's about 20. So if you just need a basic slate, I recommend the DSLR slate. Yep. If you want the more advanced features, the interactivity or the ability to tie in note taking during the things. Yep. Go for movie slate. Yeah, and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, twenty dollars for you know mm -hmm. a very, very, very useful application uh, is you know money well spent as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's not just twenty dollars, but it's you know. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but you mean, wanted one anyway. Sure, so. exactly. So very cool. Good for Creative Cow. My name's Rich Harrington, and I'm Robbie Carmen. Be sure to head on over to CreativeCow.net. We could check out the DSLR forum, and be sure to ask your questions there. Take a look at some of the demo reels people have posted, and click on the podcast tab to see our back episodes. Thanks for joining us.